Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. So, architecture is all about gaps. What do I mean by that? Well, we as architects catalogue and we model what is there and what we want to be there in the future. Um, and then we concern ourselves with finding the gaps between the two so that we can fill them in. Musicians play the rests as well as the notes. That's what provides rhythm. Actors deliver the dramatic pauses between the words. That's what provides the flow. As architects, what are our rests and pauses? Is that space in our catalogue or our model an intended void, i.e. a rest between the notes that, that we need to keep empty and preserve? Or is it a gap, somewhere that we need to fill in with, with notes and or more rests maybe before we can perform and execute it? So to me that says we should look at architecture spaces and consider whether they are voids or gaps. Welcome to season two of Toolkit Tuesday, everybody. Um, my thanks uh, to Paul Holman there of IBM for um, his intro on EA Minute Architecture Spaces. Um, thoughtful as ever. Thank you, Paul. Say a little bit more about uh, uh, about Paul and the EA Minutes in a moment. But um, I really want to uh, welcome everyone to uh, Toolkit Tuesday. We had a little break over the uh, well, the uh, uh, Northern Hemisphere summer. Anyway, uh, many of you are not in that hemisphere, but uh, had a little break for a while. We're back um, and uh, glad to be back. And we have a, a great season ahead for you. And um, my, my purpose today is really to give a little recap or a refresh of some of the topics that we covered in season one and remind you where you can get them if you missed them or you were there live but never went back to see uh, to see the recording. So I'll, I'll do some of that. And we also have something a uh, little bit uh, uh, a little bit special for you to uh, just give a, a tease for later in the uh, in, later in this show. So please uh, stay tuned and ready for that. Uh, we love to see where you where you are joining us from. It's usually. Uh, a, a number of countries that's into the 20s at least um, when we have one of these and it's great to have people joining at uh, all different times of day uh, or night and from all over the world and it's one of the things that uh, that makes this special. So without further ado I'm going to uh, run on to what I said I'd do is quick quick recap on season one and looking back on it can you believe we had 21 episodes of Toolkit Tuesday. We we uh, had a few planned when we started and thought, well, let's see how this goes. The response has been really, um, really fantastic. Um, very enthusiastic uh, reception. And uh, as a consequence, we've we've kept it going. And here we are for season two. So I guess we made it through our um, uh, through our dreaded first first season. And will we be brought back? Well, yes, we are. We're here. Um, and many of those episodes, just like today's, started with a video, a short video. It was either one of Terry's Toolkit Tuesday tips from um, Terry Blevins um, or one of Paul's EA Minutes. So unfortunately, we've lost uh, Terry Blevins from our panel of experts as he's now enjoying a very well-deserved retirement. Um, Terry was a very long-term contributor to the Open Group and, in fact, 
many of you may not know this, but uh, he was one of the very first small group of individuals who got together to uh, work on what became the TOGAF standard. So uh, we all owe uh, Terry and his and, and his peers a great debt on that. So um, we won't be seeing Terry's uh, Talk It Tuesday tips, but we will be, the good news is, we will be having more of Paul's EA minutes and uh, we're delighted to have those. Um, and you'll hopefully have just uh, seen the first one on architecture spaces. So we'll have a few more of those from Paul over the course of season two. Um, one of the things we've we've had is to try to uh, keep a, a, a bench or a panel of resident experts and uh, Paul will uh, continue to be on that. Um, we've had Chris Frost of Fujitsu who will still still be around and uh, also, my uh, my colleagues Andrew Josie, Chris Ford, and Sonia Gonzalez from the Open Group. They've all uh, been part of the uh, Ask the Expert, Expert session, which is one I think we'll um, we'll uh, recap uh, or, or come back to, I should say, in season two, um, as well as as uh, a, as a, a Q and A session. It's it's a good way of of cycling back to some of the great questions that we don't always get time to. We in in each episode we try to limit the episode to 30 to 32 minutes maximum um just to respect everyone's time and uh it doesn't always allow us to get to all the questions so sometimes we uh we cycle back during the season and have a session that's just dedicated to answering those questions so i think you can expect to see that uh, as i said we've had a lot of great feedback on the show uh on on season one and uh we love it. Um, please, it, it comes through through the chat channel. It's often when people are, are leaving, they give a brief comment, and that's that's all we're really looking for. But it's great to do that if you have the chance before you uh, leave any any episode that you're on. Um, just leave us a few words. Uh, we collect it and we do read it all, um, and uh, it's it's valuable to us. Um, and uh, at some point, we'll set up a more formal way of uh, asking you for topics that you might want to see covered on toolkit tuesday anything that's particularly important or of interest to you um, either as an ea practitioner or as somebody uh, interested in the field we'd love to uh, get those so if you if you have any any of you on today who have any then uh, maybe put those in the in the q a channel and uh, we can make note of those but we'll uh, we'll set something up so that uh, you can have uh, an opportunity or a vehicle to suggest some uh, some additional topics for us so what did we cover? Well, unsurprisingly, given that uh, this is the Open Group Toolkit Tuesday, we covered a number of TOGAF standard related um, um, topics. Um, we had EA and uh, Enterprise Agility with the TOGAF standard. Um, we had a look at the TOGAF series guide on microservices architecture. Um, principles for an EA framework and the importance of adopting the TOGAF standard. Uh, several of those, several of uh, those episodes, and they were always uh, very well attended with with a lot of uh, questions. And of course, near the end of season one, we had the exciting news of the uh, release of the TOGAF Standard Tenth Edition, with a summary of what's new and different in that. And on on that note, uh, we have something interesting to share with you later, as I hinted earlier. So we'll we'll get to that shortly. Um, other topics we, we covered, uh, another sort of bucket, if you like, of putting the sessions into was the topic of digital transformation. I mean, that's uh, uh, who isn't concerned with that right now. And uh, we all will be for some time to come, I suspect. But we covered it in, in a number of ways, you know, how to use the Open Group Architects Toolkit um, and our, dig uh, our portfolio of digital open standards in supporting digital transformation. We, we cover both of those. Uh, we had uh, a run through of the seven levers or the seven levers, depending on where you are in the world, of digital transformation, which is still one of my favorite uh, white papers that we've, we've published. Um, a, really, uh, a really great introduction to the kinds of things that you have to talk, uh, that you have to think through during digital transformation. Uh, modeling. Uh, some some of you uh, and a lot of people out there in the world are interested in in modeling, and we cover that in a couple of ways. We we looked at how to use modeling for strategic decision making, and real examples of using the Open Group Archimate modeling language. Um, actually, for real, um, that was a popular one too. As well as a session, um, not directly on modeling, but we had a session. 
uh, on automating analytics with EA roadmaps and the use of tools. And uh, one of our most well attended sessions, um, which was a slight surprise to me, not because I knew the, the speaker and the content wouldn't be great, but I didn't realize the subject matter would be quite so popular, was how to develop a MOSA or a modular open system architecture, reference architecture. Um, that was uh, that was a great session. Um, and we had quite a bit of interest in our data integration toolkit and public digital platforms. And uh, we also had a session that was um, uh, Caused, caused a lot of um, follow up and questions afterwards on our academic EA academic initiative in India called the initiate program. Um, and uh, you can find out more about that and many of these things on the open group website. And we covered actionable supply chain security as well some real life lessons. One, one of the things that goes through many of these sessions and many of the topics when we have um, an, a, a, a longer event at the open group is the is the idea that um, what people want is case studies what has worked well what hasn't worked so well and uh, you know how can we how can we learn from uh, the great decisions or the uh, uh, the temporary mistakes of others um, so uh, we try and uh, include as many of those as we can and kind of the final bucket if you like of, of topics that we covered was and it's something that's that's dear to our hearts here at the open group is is the topic of professional development so we looked at uh, we had a topic on the future of architects and uh, innovation um and digital transformation um and also an introduction to the open agile architecture certification so different from from togaf aimed at uh, a, a different different use but works very well when used in conjunction with the togaf standard and of course, we started actually with a guide to the Open Group Library, which is where you can find all this great stuff that we talk about. Um, and uh, within the Open Group Library is the TOGAF Library, and uh, uh, that was that was a useful guide through that to uh, make finding it as easy as as possible. And don't forget that these sessions that we've had so far, they're all available on the Open Group YouTube channel, channel and you can also uh, get to them from our website. And uh, so as far as season one is concerned, I'll, I'll repeat my my thanks to all our presenters and experts in season one. Um, but to most of to most of all, um, any of you who who attended any of you here today who were who were in attendance for season one. Thank you. Um, and uh, we've been delighted with the levels of participation and the great questions. So uh, long may it continue. So uh, looking forward now <clears throat> to season two, what can you expect? Well, among the topics planned, we have EA and blockchain. In fact, that's the next one. That will be two weeks today, EA and blockchain. Um, we also are going to cover zero trust architecture, uh, which um, is a, a topic that we uh, played a big part in our last uh, in-person event at the Open Group in July. Um, and we'll get um, uh, information on an overview of updates to the Archimate standard and the significant progress that's being made on the open group portfolio of digital open standards. More on digital transformation of, uh, and the role that EA plays within it, of course. Um, some highlights from our TOGAF user groups and inevitably due to the level of demand, uh, more TOGAF standard related content. So on that note, um, <clears throat> let me move to today's topic. And this isn't intended to be a deep dive into the topic, it's, it's more of a teaser. But it's um, the, the topic is really our, our latest approach to uh, TOGAF standard certification. And you may recall that when we published the standard, uh, the TOGAF standard 10th edition back at the end of April, we promised uh, updates to our certification program in the coming months. And we've made quite a bit of progress on that front. And uh, here today to give you uh, a brief look into our thinking is my colleague, the Open Group Vice President of standards and certification, uh, Andrew Josie. Uh, Andrew, are you there? There you are, right right on cue. Thanks. So uh, <clears throat> you were you opened season one, um, first episode in season one with the library, and here you are on uh, um, the first episode of season two. So uh, there's, a, there's a theme here. So um, what can you share with us today about uh, uh, TOGAF certification? Okay, Steve, I've prepared a few slides, so let's just see if I can get those 
sharing okay hopefully you're seeing the right set of slides looks good yeah okay so thank, thanks again steve for that introduction it's good to be back again as you say uh, always a series opener but, uh, that's that's my lineup that's what i do um as you know we released the togaf standard uh, 10th edition in april this year it's uh, obviously time's flown by a little bit but um uh, some of you may be familiar with this diagram from the 10th edition website. Uh, I want to spend a few minutes just thinking about our approach to certification. So this is the, if you can see the diagram there, it's, um, it's the, sort of in the get certified area in the top right. Um, I'm going to be talking about this in a lot more detail at the Open Group Edinburgh event. So a little plug for the event there. Um, as we highlight on this diagram, what we see with the TOGO standard 10th edition is a refreshed modular structure. And that makes it much easier to apply the TOGAF framework to different kinds of organizations and also styles of architecture. This is the uh, set of documents that we released uh, in April. As you see, it's, it's quite a large set. Uh, we have six what we call the TOGAF fundamental uh, content documents that are in the, the bottom uh, sort of left, left of this, this uh, screen and uh, 20 TOGAF series guides. We actually expect this set to grow over time. Um, this set can can be and has been packaged in a number of ways. So you'll see that we've got the digital edition, we have PDF downloads, and we also have the hard copy. So just show you a quick glimpse of the hard copy. Uh, for the hard copy, obviously, we decided we couldn't print, you know, all 20, 26 of the current documents. So we selected, I think it was about 15 documents, packaged them into actual sort of, again, little subsets, and, and we've published seven hard copy documents. Now, with such a breadth of available material, we've had to consider how best to manage that for, for our training and certification purposes. So the approach that we've actually um, decided on is to define a number of bodies of knowledge drawn from the standard. What do I mean by body of knowledge? Well, a body of knowledge is something that defines the content for a certification, and a body of knowledge is something that defines what is examinable. So, you know, what will be the topics for the exam? So where does this lead us? So for the TOGAF stand, standard 10th edition, we're going to be defining multiple bodies of knowledge, each of them related to a specific skill set or competency drawn for the standard. So this will lead to multiple certifications and certification credentials being available. It will also allow us to have a stable and targeted certifications and permit the standard to, to grow because we expect the standard to continue growing. Uh, and this will include new learning paths, both for people who are coming to the certification program for the first time, but also those who are TOGAF 9 certified. So, and where can you find out more? As I say, I'll be uh, talking at the Open Group Edinburgh event in October. I hope you'll join us to find out a little bit more. Well, in fact, a lot more about this then. Back to you, Steve. Andrew, that's great. Thank you very much for, uh, for that. Uh... Uh, whistle stop guide to the thinking behind uh, certification. So, uh, um, as I said before, and it's not intended to be a, a deep dive today. It's really uh, wetting people's appetites for hearing hearing more in a few weeks' time at our at our Edinburgh event. Um, but obviously, the, the unsurprisingly, the uh, questions that, that that come in are are around. There's a lot of interest, let's say, in uh, in what we're going to do with certification. So if I am a, a TOGAF 9 certified, um, uh, will there be a way to, this is a question I know that we've had before and, and, uh, and answered before, but will there be um, a, a, a direct way of upgrading my, my certification? Yes, Steve, there will be. Um... A number of ways, in fact, um, for those people who are TOGAF 9 certified who want to sort of refresh and update to the latest um, equivalent certification, there will be what we call a bridging path. So there will be a bridging, there is a bridging syllabus being defined and there will be a bridging exam that you can take to, um, to qualify for that. There are also going to be a number of other learning paths because, uh, as I mentioned, there's going to be more than one certification. There'll be multiple certifications, also what we call certification credentials which are actually smaller chunks of your learning. So we've looked at the new standard and we've been able to define 
some new areas, specific skill sets, specific com competencies that we want to address. And if you've got TOGAF 9 certification, we recognize that as one of the prerequisites to come into those new learning paths that, we've, that we're defining. So right. basically, if, you, if you're thinking about doing TOGAF 9 certification right now, it's a good move, carry on, do that. And, you know, and there will be upward paths for you as we uh, expand what we're calling the TOGAF certification portfolio to encompass also um, the 10th edition standard. Oh, you you answered the second question before me asking it, which was, uh, yeah, I'm part way through studying and now, and now I have to. So, yes, yeah, go ahead. It's always been our, been, been our message. Do go ahead with the um, TOGAF 9 certification. That's uh, um, going to still be worth worthwhile. Um, and the structure of the new the the new program will be uh, will be will be quite different. But you'll you'll be uh, it'll e be uh, easy to see where you uh, where your path or choice of paths will be. So uh, that's great. Uh, and another question that's come in, Andrew, which I know you you can answer this um, easily, um, is uh, how can we download the TOGAF ten document series? Okay, well, yeah, if you just um, either go to the open group site, and I think on the right that says the TOGAF standard 10th edition is available, and you just basically follow the links, but where you will end up in is um, the open group library, basically look for look for TOGAF in there. Yeah, yeah, um, and there was also a link on your slide I noticed there earlier. Was. You, yeah. There was. Yeah, to the digital edition, yeah. Yes, so yeah. Um, go to, I think it's www opengroup.org slash TOGAF slash 10th edition, although I can't spell that quite. I think it's 10th edition. I think, I think that's the URL it's right. to follow. Great stuff. Well, Andrew, um, we'll leave it there for now. Um, we, as I say, you've, uh, you'll have triggered some interest um, and uh, you'll hear more about uh, where we're going with certification at our Edinburgh event, which is coming up quite soon next month. Uh, it's uh, I'll give a shameless plug. Andrew, give a slight hint, but a, a shameless plug I'll give. It's uh, eight, it's October the seventeenth to the nineteenth at the Edinburgh International Conference Centre, um, and uh, we also have a, a, a conference hotel, which is the Sheraton Grand Hotel and Spa. So there are some. Uh, uh, quite a few of the people attending will be staying there, but uh, not obligatory. Um, but uh, yes, the Edinburgh International Conference Centre is the venue. Our main theme for the event, um, this is basically a, a, over three days, but our main theme is EA and sustainability and digital open standards. So those are the main themes crossing the three days. Uh, we'll also along the way have a TOGAF user group and an open professions workshop open professions is a program in the open group a certification program a lot of people know about the knowledge based programs like TOGAF, Archimate, IT for IT, OAA etc but the open professions is more of a skills and experience based program and um, we'll be having a workshop about that and I think um, uh, we can expect a session on that at uh, a future toolkit Tuesday too, um, because it's something that, um, as people learn about it, they uh, tend to be very interested in from a professional and personal development point of view. Um, we also have meetings in Edinburgh for our architecture forum, our Archimate forum, uh, IT for IT forum, and the uh, digital practitioner work group. So, if any of you are members. Your organizations are members of the open group, open group and uh, uh, are members of those forums, then uh, it would be a great opportunity to meet in person uh, with your peers in those forums. And we'll have some great speakers from our Open Footprint Forum. As I say, EA and sustainability is one of the, the main topics. And we'll have some really great speakers speaking on the topic of sustainability, which is something that we're all obviously coming across every day and needing to find some answers for. So uh, the registration information uh, is available on our on our website. Um, in fact, we've never done this before, but uh, a very special offer today. The first person who is attending Toolkit Tuesday today who signs up for our Edinburgh event using the uh, special Toolkit Tuesday code, which I hope will appear or has appeared in the chat, um, sign up using that code and you'll get a free pass to the event. I, I realize that uh, some of you attending, it's a it's a, a long way away and there'll be uh, more local events for you in the future. But if anyone was uh, on the fence thinking about it, make sure that the first one registered and you'll get a free pass to the event. 
And I should say as well, um, not something we do very often, but uh, every few years or so, usually in Scotland, uh, in fact, always in Scotland, uh, we're hosting uh, the Open Group Golf Event Day, which is at the Torrance Course in, in St Andrews. So um, if that clinches the deal for anyone uh, thinking of attending the event, then please do join us. Uh, we have uh, limited spaces, but we do still have a few available um, for that. And that's on the Sunday before the event. So um, that's really uh, it for today's um, topic. Um, and talking about certification and you will hear more obviously as you've as you've gathered in the coming uh, well next month at our Edinburgh event uh, and I'm sure at some point we'll hold um, more detailed sessions on this in Talk It Tuesday in the future um, but for now um, that's it for um, today's topic um, don't go away just yet though um, next next time around we will have uh, a great session. Um, it will be uh, Rick Ross, who is, is the Director of Consulting Blockchain Emerging Technology at EY, and uh, our very own Jim Hytella, the Open Group Vice President of Business Development and Security. They're gonna be exploring the intersection of blockchain and enterprise architecture. And that will serve as a kickoff for uh, actually a whole webcast series on the topic. Uh, various topics relating to the use of EA in different blockchain use cases. So if you want to know what blockchain is all about, if you know already and um, and want, want to know more, um, see you in two weeks' time. Uh, meanwhile, thank you for uh, joining us on uh, our, our first episode back for Season 2 of Talk It Tuesday. I'm Steve Nunn. Thank you for watching.